Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I was going to try and do this uh, video in one shot, but unfortunately I went to a lot of trouble yesterday and tried to post it, and it was over the limit and was not permitted. So <clears throat> I had to split it up into two parts. So make sure that you see the first part before you get into the second part, because it wouldn't make any sense otherwise. So where were we? Uh, we were in Denmark, and um, we had our basic training in Denmark, and they really worked us hard, so we didn't have a lot of leisure time to get to know any Danes was out of the question. There was a non-fraternization policy anyway, and we were only recruits, so we were the lowest of the low. And <laughs> so the, um, there was one uh, sad incident. Um, uh, one of our fellows was um, pulling guard duty at night, and since we did have infiltrators occasionally, and we had um, uh, people um, committing, well, let's say the sabotage, uh, uh, committing sabotage, we were trying to protect our tanks and ourselves. So guards were posted at night, <coughs> and the boys were usually uh, sitting on the tanks and um, watching what was going on. And the uh, commanding officer, the colonel, very seldom made his rounds, but once in a while he did. And um, he, he did this one particular day, and he found um, the guy sitting on the tank, and when he called him, there was no answer. So um, he had his ordinance uh, go up to him and, um, and uh, try to talk to him, and when he uh, tried to touch him, the whole thing collapsed. It was a rifle with a helmet on top and a coat uh, around it, and the guy wasn't anywhere near it. So it turned out the guy was under the tank and was sleeping. So uh, that in wartime is a, is a f uh, you know, the, the most severe uh, crime you can commit. So actually, it, the firing squad is usually the answer for this. But the boy was all of 17 years old. The colonel felt terribly sorry for him, and uh, he was court-martialed, and at the court-martial, the, um, he was really given a tremendous chewing out. He was told that uh, normally the death penalty would be the, um, the um, situation here, but the colonel really uh, leaned over backwards and um, let him get back into his unit. And of course, he warned him. And would you believe that this same boy pulled the same stunt again? Because it was on a very rainy day, and he was sure that the colonel wouldn't go around. But he did, and uh, this time there was no out. So um, unfortunately, and a general was visiting at the time, and when he heard this, uh, there was absolutely no chance for the boy. And the boy was um, condemned to death uh, by firing squad. And they were appointing six of us to uh, be the members of the squad. I was very fortunate not to be one of them, but it could just have easily have, have, have been me. And then, of course, we were all marched up, and. Uh, uh, stood around and, and, and watched it, and the execution took place. And uh, I looked at the colonel, and I could see tears running down his, his cheeks. It was really uh, very moving. The guy was totally, you know, in shock about this. And uh, But I must say, I'm, I have to agree with him. This, there is no other way. This, this was not preventable. The guy was absolutely stupid to pull this kind of stunt. Well, anyway, this was the last um, impression in Denmark, and then we went back to our barracks in Neuropin. Our training had uh, just about ended, and uh, we, I was promoted to ROB, which uh, the German, uh, is a German abbreviation for Reserve Officer Candidate. So <coughs> I was given uh, two bars to wear on my shoulder, and uh, that made me... Um, <laughs> stand out uh, bad enough so that every sergeant and every corporal would take his anger out on us because he knew that this was the last time they had a chance. Next time we would be officers and uh, it would be the different ballgame. So it wasn't a very pleasant time after that. Well then, um, let me just uh, briefly look at some notes I took because I want to make sure. There was one thing in European that was uh, unusual and again typical of our military, and the Prussian military in particular, and this was a Prussian regiment, um, at least the tradition was. Um, I had volunteered for a, a rather hair-raising assignment. I felt there was too much time being wasted, I might miss out on something, and so I volunteered for a, um, a mission uh, that was, to put it mildly, uh, rather suicidal. 
And the, the colonel was not impressed by that at all, and uh, he called me on the carpet and chewed me out, and, and I'm a bit stubborn, so I decided, I said, look, um, I, I understand, but uh, there's a need, and uh, I would like to volunteer for this. It, it happened to be on the Russian front, and this is where nobody in his right mind would go. But my feeling was that, look, I have no axe to grind with the Allies so far. I mean, after the war, I would have had because of the bombings that they did at the very end of the war. But at that time, I didn't have an axe to grind with them. And I was then I had plenty of axes to grind with the Russians who were uh, about to, to enter my hometown. So uh, I think I would be able to, to muster a little more enthusiasm. Well, he, he may have understood that, but uh, he he wasn't too impressed by it, so he he told me to sleep over it. And the next day, or was it the day after, I was told to uh, appear at the colonel's office. So again, I had to go through the same procedure that my friend Molly had to go through, um, put on the best uniform, wait in the ante room, and so on. And when I got into the office for the colonel, who was there but my dad? <laughs> he had called my dad and said, Come down here and talk some sense of this boy. He's crazy. So, um, well, my dad walked around with me and, uh, and and asked me why I was doing this, and and I said, well, you know, I have a feeling that um, uh, somebody has to do it, and uh, why not me? And you know, we have a we set me up an extra grind with the Russians. Well, he said, uh, Bernie, uh, let's forget this. Try to get through this thing somehow or other. Get through the war. That's all you want to do right now. The war's lost. You know it and I know it. So why risk your life in a, in a such a stupid way? Uh, well, anyway, he talked me out of it. And uh, But again, it, it shows you um, how different the military really was. It, it was a uh, almost like a, um, like a clan or a, a clique of some sort. Well, um, this was the, the last of my, um, my stay in uh, Neuropin, and, and then we were transferred to Erlangen, Erlangen for an officer's uh, candidate's course. But before going uh, anywhere on any kind of course, we had to go to the front and um, go through frontline experience. That is absolutely was required at the time, and before you could become an officer, you had to have at least uh, six months at the front. So my next assignment was the front line. But before I get into that, and I will do that next time, uh, I will show you the pictures and I will show you and, and let you hear the music. So for now, let me be this, let this be enough, and uh, we'll talk again next time. Ob Stürm, Toder Schneid, und die Sonne und Sacht, der Tag lieben heißt, oder Sind die Gesichter, doch froh ist unser 